Hello and welcome to the magic of human beings. I'm Carol Cristina da Silva. The magic of human beings was created to share extraordinary stories about other magical human beings. It's important for me to share these stories, to know we are not alone, we are all connected one way or another. So my intention is that we can support and inspire each other by celebrating our journeys and individuality. And today, oh, our, our guest, it's an incredible, incredible friend, beautiful human being, photographer, documentarist. I won't tell you more, we'll bring him on, Roberto Rubalcava. So let's get Roberto in the show. Originally from Mexico and London based. So let me, so here we go. I hope you're good. Hello, Julia. Hello, Ana Paula. So Roberto is waving and We are waiting for him to join. <laughs> wow, I can't believe it. This is, oh, fuck. Sorry. Um, yes. There, there I am. Oh, God, oh, this is no so God. exciting. <laughs> Look at me. I told you, I told you I made an effort. I know all those colors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, How are you? Welcome, Roberto. Welcome. Thank you thank so much for joining. No, thank you for having me. Look at this. This is so nice. Oh, oh. oh God. I'm very nervous, Carol. I am super, super nervous. I'm always hiding be behind a camera, never in front of a camera. So let's see how. So let's think of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what people tell me when I say I'm nervous. Oh, they just say, oh, so we just take a breath in. Let's see if it works. A breath in. <laughs> how are you, Carol? And a breath out. Um, look, all these hearts. All these hearts. <sighs> wow. Well, I, I, I'm very, very nervous. But anyway, I'm so happy to be here with you. Thank you for inviting me. And um, yeah, I'm all yours. <laughs> Good, okay. So we, let's just uh, start by talking about background because there are some friends in here that don't know uh, where do you come from and your journey to coming to London. So please share. Well, I was born in Mexico. Um, I was raised there. And I started traveling when I was maybe mid twenties, mid yeah, mid twenties. I I wanted to pursue my career professionally, so I moved to New York for a couple of years, and then I went back to Mexico where I I started taking more serious photography, and then in 1999 I moved um, to London, which I'm now. Now base, this is my base. This is where the center of operations is. And yeah, I'm very lucky to be here. And yes, um, basically I'm, I'm, have been taking pictures for over 20 years. And a lot of things have happened. <laughs> yes, I was looking at all background research <laughs> in your pictures and how you started with fashion, right? I was a fashion photographer. <laughs> 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 uh, 
And then life just uh, took me in different directions. And now I'm sharing uh, my time between uh, being a full-time yoga teacher um, and taking um, arty pictures. Um, and yes, so a long, long journey, long, long journey. Yes, and uh, your fashion pictures, they were uh, so dreamy, ethereal, but I always found there was also a bit melancholic on them. There was also something else happening. Yeah, they were um, mostly inspired from very old, old master paintings. I, I want them to be um, out of focus, most of them. I want them to be very dreamy and to evoke kind of uh, this sense of intoxicating beauty. That's what I wanted to to portray. <laughs> intoxicating beauty. Hello, Joel. Joel just is joining from Paris. Oh, how exciting was you? <laughs> okay. Paris. <laughs> I think it's a great it's... introduction, Paris, now that comes out to, so because I think this journey until we are here talking, you and me, that we met in, in Mozambique, I think this journey started in Paris, so. Oh, tell me. So yes, um, through the fashion industry, I made very, very good friends, which I still in contact with. One, we have a common friend called Lina Shinias. Yes. Which which um, is a great inspiration for me, and we hung around. And one of the trips, when she was based in Paris, I went to to visit her, and then is when I met Amanda, Amanda Erickson, Three Man Awake, Amanda Erickson, and from there we start collaborating, and. We did loads and lots of pictures. I think for many years, she was my subject from a lot of pictures, experimenting. And that trip to Paris, we did a session of, on Polaroids. We used the SX-70 and I had one last pack of film um, left before the, the, the factory closed down. And I said, we have to do something very special. So we did a, a really beautiful um, shoot for her brand, well, no brand, obviously, for her project, Dream and Awake, uh -huh. which was all in Polaroids. And we did 10 pictures that then these 10 pictures became exhibitions going everywhere around the world. As she is so amazing to get shit done, yes. right? Yes. <laughs> and I have That's some, I have the stories, I have the stories, yes. So I prepare kind of a slideshow for you. It's going to be a manual slideshow. Bring and it this, on, bring it on. This is, well, wait, wait, wait. Let me, <laughs> let me introduce my lovely mother. If you oh. can see my lovely mother that yes. she just left this world um, about a year ago when the Pantini started, she had yeah. an accident and she left. So lots of love to my mom. This is a tribute for you, mom, because you raised me so well. And then when we moved to London, this is Beate, you know Beate. Yeah. There she is Beata. in the freezing cold. So we venture together into, into London and she's so good. She's, she's doing so well. She's very well established photographer, still life photographer, beatesonember.com. So give it a go. And then this, from this, everything starts. This is Lina, remember? Yeah. This shot was in the kitchen in Mozambique. So thanks to my friendship with her is how we are talking now, you and me. Yes. Because I went to visit her and this Polaroid just make everything oh, going wow. into cascade. Is it so a I was... or is it a, a print in the wall? What, this little thing? Yeah. This is just a print because oh, the, the Polaroid, the Polaroid, the original Polaroid was donated for a um, a charity auction that Beate did 
so I don't have the Polaroid, but you know, it's just one. So I just scan it and I did a little print. And yes, from here, everything developed. We did loads and loads and lots of pictures, like the ones you were mentioning. You know, oh, the yes. Ophelia one, mm -hmm. remember this one? This one was very successful. That was a visit in Sweden. I went, but every week there were pictures and pictures and pictures. And I was documenting all her her um, collection. She collects um, used and secondhand dresses from charity shops. From So we were documenting all these beautiful garments that she brought to life. Until we collaborated with another um, beautiful uh, company called Jumpen Fabric. And, and we managed to do a big, big show in Gothenburg from all the pictures. Oh, wow. Yeah. So this basically was like a, like a big thing for me. It was the first time I was exhibiting work in a proper museum. And it was just a big honor to be part of that. And then things just keep going, keep going, keep going. Uh, but I wanted to go away from photography, I, from fashion photography. I didn't know how to to move and to use my tools and my experience into something more with more depth, with more mm -hmm. kind of... Um... But Roberto, yes. we move to how you move out of... Uh fashion photography. Yes. Just tell how we met. How we met? Yeah, well, we met we... in Sweden. <laughs> 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 I think you were behind. <laughs> <laughs> we met in Sweden the first time. In Sweden? Yes. You don't even remember that. No. Was it cray Crayfish Party? Yes. Of yes. 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 And um, and then we met in Mozambique in this beautiful project. Yeah, and I would love to hear your thoughts because for me what happened was so beautiful and how you were documenting so many things and you got yes. two films out of that, or if not more. So I'd like yes. to hear from you, how was your experience? Being from there? Mozambique, I think that was, um, that was a big, big, big project that, that touched my life, not just as a, as, a, as a photographer, but as a human being, because obviously spending that adventure with you, with Amanda, with Lina, with all our friends, and that chaotic environment, kind of a dangerous environment, very challenging. I think we all grew together in, 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 in that experience. I don't know. I mean, it's it's quite hard to say my my vision into that because obviously we were all working together and we saw things in a different way. Yeah. Um, and I think we all the important thing we all were having in personal problems at that time. We yeah. all have something to worry about. Um, in my case, I was dealing with my health. I was now in a very good health. And we were complying with taking these anti-malaria tablets. That... <laughs> <laughs> I think it was a mistake, <laughs> anti-malaria tablets. Oh. <laughs> so everything escalated. Everything had a bigger resonance that really, really had. So I was, I think, making it uh, in my head things bigger than they really were but anyway let's move out of there <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I remember picking you up from the airport in, in, in Maputo um, we were with these beautiful people um, back to back to back to basics adventures uh, dot com in, in uh, Ponta de Oro Mozambique yeah. and so we picked you up from the airport and we were from Maputo straight away to Punta de Oro, which in the map looks really close. And we thought, ah, oh, we went together in no time. <laughs> but the adventure started right there. <laughs> 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 
taking the ferry in the in the in the, in the with the with the with the car and and the waves and then we cross this channel and then there was Africa in front of us the the the, the tundra that everything was just in front of us and and the the darkness the stars that everything was just wonderful and then we get there we got there to to Mozambique to, sorry to to Punta de Oro and we stay a couple of days with them and it's our when our project started when we um went to the first orphanage right uh, right by the border there <laughs> Right by the border, the border with uh, with South Africa, it was it's so incredible. The, the the car broke down, but I think that I have this vivid day in my life. I think it was one of the most important days in my life, because that morning, I went I went scuba diving. Remember before going, <laughs> so it was very early, going with all these diplomats. In, it was the in, first the, time, huh? in the boat, it was the first time, and it was like just go for it. And I remember um, the boat came out from the bay, and dolphins start jumping next to the boat. And then obviously people were very experienced, and I was so nervous, like almost like I'm now. <laughs> 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 and then we got all the gear and everything, and it's like the, the people with experience they just went like bloop. And they just went, <laughs> and I was like, and what, what do I do? What do I do? <laughs> and this wonderful, wonderful, beautiful man just dumping the sea, and I just rolled back, and then there I was, scuba diving without <laughs> anything. <laughs> then we went back, and they gave us the car, and then we went in the car driving without any direction, then the car broke down and no, it came and that through. No, that wasn't just that driving in direction. You were picking everyone up because you yes. it was like three, three hours, hours. People to get from this village or not. You'd stop and say, jump in, jump in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it was magnificent. It was a beautiful experience. Then after the car broke down, we were like, oh, that what we do. And we go rescue. They came to rescue us. And I, I remember they used one of the scuba diving tanks to 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 refill to just to to put it in the tire that blew up or something so like handmade something so amazing happened there to to fix the car. Well, anyway, we just carry on there, and it's when we started we started the project right there, right by the border with uh, with South Africa. I. I just, I wonder, it's for, for me, what I like about uh, the diving, because that was the first time you dived, right? That was the first time, and I knew it's not going to be the last one. So obviously, years, years later, I pick it up again, and I managed to go across to Indonesia. I remember my second dive was in Indonesia. And Indonesia is so beautiful, but it's completely polluted with rubbish. Because you did a, you did short films about it. Yes, the... yes. On the what? I have some stills from there. If you want to see them, oh, I don't know. I'm just me. like bombarding you with things. So this is the first time I took a camera under the sea, mm -hmm. and it was just incredible. Like another, another, another world. Another world. Look at that. This was just incredible. Can you see? Maybe it's yeah. Not... Yeah. Bring a little this bit is... forward, a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Let me just. I think there are some lights here that are not really good. So I really enjoy that uh, through diving, you also uh, got curious about taking pictures underwater and filming underwater. Yes. And um, yeah, I mean, this continue and continue, continue, obviously very sporadic. It's not like always there because it's kind of, you need a sea to do it. <laughs> and so every time I have the opportunity to continue that project, I was 
um, filming. There was no basically life nothing alive in that sea it was so beautiful but the the coral was bleached completely bleach, uh -huh. it was dead so i think that was the oh. first thing that i did i did um documenting the coral reef that was bleached yeah. then i focused on the ravage like all this plastic just yeah. surrounding you and and going um knowing the but I mean, turtles just eat the plastic and they die. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they, they think that it's food and they just eat it and die. And just not the turtles, every big fish that can. Um, yeah, so anyway. I, Was it I'm, bad that your uh, style of photography start changing? Um, I think it raised more awareness into these kind of things. Mm -hmm. No. Um, And yes, so I continued scuba diving in other areas until I went into caverns in in, in Mexico, and, and that was pretty stupid of my part. <laughs> I'm already going like this because I heard this story. Um, yeah. And me and so me let, were like, what? Why? <laughs> Let's skip that part because that was irresponsible and stupid. No, Let's but focus. you went. You went with the guide. You walked. I've, I went in the guide, obviously in Mexico, it's like, yeah, that's, it's like there's no health and safety regulations. And I just wanted to, to really experience a, a, a confined environment to add yeah. to my training because the, the, my dream is to do a, like, like under the ice. Yeah. Like when, when there is a frozen sea, I want to go under the ice and, and, and film these beautiful colors and all that that you only see when you are a very experienced diver. So to achieve that qualification, you need to have a qualification into enclosed environment. Cave so cave, cave diving gives yeah. you that qualification. <laughs> but obviously, <laughs> you have to have a lot of experience that I don't have. You have to have a perfect buoyancy the, the equipment is different than the open sea because obviously in the open sea you are diving like this and in a cave you have to be like this all the time mm -hmm. yeah so having a camera it doesn't really work because you like this so the camera goes up as soon as you go up buoyancy takes you up so it was like going against the the the, the ceiling of the cave <laughs> and it's all dark <laughs> it's all dark as you can see i need glasses so everything was rental and I couldn't see how much air I had left because it was dark, you have a little torch and then the water just mix. And it's, it's a big, it's, 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 no, I don't recommend to do that only but, if you have a lot of experience. But what for me, what would be really, really scary was the part that you walk into the forest and yeah, then, you have to go like in the jungle. It's not forest, it's jungle, it's jungle. with, with mosquitoes jungle? and all the things that beautiful jungle brings. And then you get your gear and then, and then there is a hole. hole and then you just jump. And like, how high was the hole? Five meters. Five meters. And there's no way back. You can't it, climb. It, there's a point. rope. You have to climb with a rope. Okay. Yeah, so that, yes, I mean, just getting to the bloody hole is, is like an adventure because you're <laughs> in a four by four. <laughs> and then you jump into the, this thing. And obviously, you see light there, but as long as you, you start going down and away from the, the, the big hole, then everything is pitch black, obviously. And when you go in the cave that I didn't want to go in the cave, I wanted to stay in this beautiful light. But the guide wanted to go really deep. So I have to follow the guide. Yeah. And then it gets getting narrower and narrower and narrower and more and more. I did three dives. I came back with one decent picture. Wow. Great. And yeah, and I don't think I would do it again ever. Okay. <laughs> So don't try that at home, kids. <laughs> yeah, do not try that. 
Oh, Don't wow, try you, that so you've home. been pushing your limits. A little bit, a little bit, but you know, you have one life only. So yes, let's, let's experience as much as we can. But let's go back to Mozambique, please. Okay. <laughs> please just tell me, tell me your experience. How was your experience uh, after? My, exp it was, it was no stop. Uh, were five of us leaving the flat and uh, and um, the place was like full of life like how the project with the street kids started was they were there and they were hungry for uh, doing things activities and um, it was very rich. I learned so much. And in the process, I made some beautiful, fantastic friendships. Like the kids. Like you, <laughs> Lina, Amanda. Yeah, there you are in action. Can you see it? I don't know, the lights are a bit weird. I was using daylight just to have, oh, wow. can you see yourself? Is it not working really showing pictures, I right? I can see, but there is lots of reflections. I see, that's very weird. Oh. I'm sorry, Carol. I have lots of pictures to show you, but if there are a lot of reflections, I don't show you pictures, I better show you this. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh. I told you. Yeah, and this. Mira, you cannot oh, see bring, it. What happened? Why, why, why is it so oh, bleak? Yes, no, it's working. Oh, I remember that. Wow. Oh, que lindo. That was in my room. Maybe I, I closed the blind. Let's see what happened. Like, I managed to see when you brought it really close. I'm like a... Why is it so bleak? It's still very bleak. Maybe it's because you are so bright. Mm. But... Roberto, how was it to do the documentary of Bottles of Hope? Well, I didn't have any experience to do any documentary stuff. We learn as we do it with David. He was an amazing, very patient man. <laughs> well, I just had a camera. I have never filmed in my life. And I think we just learned. That was a part of the learning process um, to just go for it and 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 hope for the best. So yes, it was a new experience. It was something that I have never done before. And I think we came out with something quite interesting to be one camera, no professional equipment whatsoever. And it was just your magic and the magic of the kids. But also they got so used to having you around them as well and um... but took took a little bit of time to 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 earn the, the trust yeah. you know they were a bit suspicious at the beginning obviously they love you straight away because who cannot love carol <laughs> uh, <laughs> um but yes i think it took a little bit of an effort to 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 get to get to to get the trust and to work with us so I think you were the magic. I was just like a, like an extension of your beauty and your and your magic. Um, but at the end, we became very good friends. Yes. At the end, we really bonded with them, and it would be nice to know what happened to them, where they are, how they doing. Yeah. How what? Because they were so creative, they took everything and even created even more on top of that what we gave them yeah so when you mention oh it's a documentary about this i think it's just a man using a camera and just basically documenting what you were doing with no any experience whatsoever how to do <laughs> so, and then Marcelo did an amazing edition. I think the whole credit is for Marcelo to put this thing together. They were yes. like little, little clips, little, clips, yes. little oh, things, right? Great friend. Without any direction, without any... We were just like really having footage that were put together 
um, the, the the sound is the sound of the kids as well. They were singing. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, is after that like in film wise because there is Bot of Hopes and then is it the second one the one that you go to Nepal? Yeah, that was another one that I had a little, a little, little bit more experience. So tell us, like, why were you in Nepal, first of all? I, I was with, with lovely Rebecca. Rebecca, if you are watching, send you lots of love and, 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 and more, 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 more love. I, I think I'm going to cry at some point with all this love, with all these people, the magic of, of human beings. Well, we went there after the earthquake in 2015. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I resonate with that because in Mexico we had a big earthquake in 85 as well and I lost a few members of my family. They were crushed um, by their own buildings where they were getting ready to go to work. So mm -hmm. she went yeah. before, she made a lot, lot of nice friends in Nepal and, and we just tried to do something to help. So I thought if we do a documentary, documenting, and maybe raising money for that, and maybe taking pictures, maybe selling pictures. So any way that we could um, generate money would be great. And there was a charity, Houses for Nepal in the Netherlands, that they were basically doing exactly the same. So we, we team up. And we just went, we just went to the adventure. And yeah, I mean, I don't want to talk too much about that because I think she should be part of this beautiful conversation because it was a very beautiful journey of both of us. And it would be nice if she, if she will talk about her experience as well. But yeah, that, like going back to the, the film thing, it was exactly the same. One camera, um, no real experience on filming. Mm -hmm. And we put some very interesting things together. And we met lots of amazing, amazing people that made it that happen. So we trek for about 10 days. So imagine how many people you get to know in those 10 days in the Sherpa area. Mm -hmm. and just going up and down hills and mountains and the snow, ice, um, And where heat. were you staying? We were staying in wherever the, the, the night um, catches. Mm -hmm. We stay in, in local houses. Um, we stay once in a monastery, in a Buddhist monastery. Um, there was the day off. So we managed to interact with the monks and the nuns and... <laughs> Any pictures? Uh, yeah, I have pictures, but I don't think you can see them, unfortunately. Well, let's you... try. Let's try. Um, well, this is the, the guy, oh, one of yes. the guys, yeah. Yeah. That was one of the highest ranking in that monastery. And I have never been to a monastery before. Now, this is lovely, Rebecca. I bless her. I sell her all my love oh, and love and love and love. She made this possible. This is another, another wonder of, of humans, another beautiful. Mira, now I can show you pictures. Look at this. I mean, oh, this is just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Look at this. Look at that little baby. Isn't she beautiful? Well, anyway, I have never been to a monastery before. And it, it was just incredible. Mm -hmm. And that resonated a lot because I was getting into this yoga training, which now I do like a full time. And I didn't know that resonance is going to have now for my, my, this moment of my life, you know, because now I'm studying more of the, of the life of the Buddha, more of the teachings. Um, and at that time, it, it was just like going to school firsthand, you know, like, like, like see the way of life, the way of thinking, just walking 
through through the mountains and hills with Buddhist people, how they respect nature, how they respect their 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 wildlife. And yeah, it was incredible experience. It was absolutely incredible. And yes, uh, this was another journey that changed my life. Mm-hmm. And things repeat itself. Like we also were having a lot of like like personal problems, and then on the trek, um, we just managed to to let those problems behind and and try to enjoy the experience because it was super, super rich. Mm-hmm. So all these, all these projects, all these things that we do in groups, they're always challenges. a story behind and challenges, no? And somehow you always go through the challenges and you always go through and you come back as a better person as you left, I think. Yeah. If you can take learning from it, it, you do. They help us grow. Yes. Yes. So a lot of, lots and lots of experiences um, that just enrich you as a human being, right? It makes you, it makes you better human. It makes you appreciate life. Yes. And I guess also if you have the opportunity to go to different places and see different things. Like, I would love you to talk about uh, some experience you did with your photographer friend that you went to Chernobyl. To Chernobyl, that was with Raul Ortega Ayala. This is a, 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 an art, a Mexican artist, which um, work I adore. I, I think he's super talented. And I was very, very proud that he invited me to to be part of that project. We went five times to Chernobyl. We went in all different, yeah, we went to all different seasons. Um, and one of the trips was when um, Ukraine was having the revolution. <laughs> so what, you went to Chernobyl? You went... Yeah, we landed in Kiev and... And yes, the revolution was going on. And, and the hotel that he booked, it was a five-star hotel. And he said, it's so cheap. I don't, I wonder why it's so cheap. It's so good. And turns that was right in the center <laughs> of the revolution, <laughs> in the main square. <laughs> so we went to our hotel and, and you can just, like see fire, like smoke everywhere. The hotel smell smoke, like burn, because they were burning tires to protect themselves from, yeah. from, <laughs> from to create the smoke because they were snipers, like shooting people in the square, like like things that are incredible, no? Then when we left Kiev, we felt actually safe. When we <laughs> went to Chernobyl, it was safer, but there were no, no humans. That was your radiation. It was just... <laughs> and how did you leave the hotel? Did you have to go camouflage? Did you... No, I mean, you just walk out and between all these people and people celebrating, shouting. Um, there were military p- people dressed like soldiers um, everywhere, but they were, you didn't know which part they were. So basically, you just hope for the best. You just went through the crowds <laughs> with all the cameras and everything. <laughs> so that was a, an, an extra, extra experience from the trip. And then we got to Chernobyl. Um, and we made lovely, lovely friends, like like the, the people that that um, look after you, the people that make you safe, because obviously it's a very challenging environment. Um, you need to have someone with a Geiger counter with the, um, um, to, to see how much radiation wow. it is in the place. Mm-hmm. And so he goes first and he goes like, dee, 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 and then, he, dis- he says that if it's safe for you to be there and you cannot stay too long. And then you have um, a person with a, with a gun as well because there's a lot of um, wild animals that uh-huh. are taking, like nature is taking over 
um, one of the cities that's the, the one that's called Pipriat is the one that you can actually have access from Chernobyl. So Chernobyl is a base mm -hmm. where the reactor is and the city closest to Chernobyl is called Pripy Pripyat, which is where the, where the people that work for the reactor used to live. Ah, okay. And it was quite a new city when, when the disaster happened. A lot of um, things weren't even open. They were just um, on the construction. Like the theme park that you see with the with the Wheel Fortune uh -huh. and all that was never open. Oh wow! And I remember seeing pictures when you came back, and I was I couldn't believe like everything was left, and then the amount of would, dust. And do you have any it, of those to show us? I I have some, obviously not too many because I always respect, and um, I can show you Raul. This is oh, the beautiful yes. man that made that possible. Another, another human being that I absolutely adore. This was one of the guys that um, keep us safe. Okay. It was mm -hmm. always, you see the old dress with the yeah. military uniforms and, and they are always trying to make make you be safe and i think this is one of my favorite pictures that is now in the project so i'm happy to share this mm -hmm. abandoned abandoned um places and you can yeah. see the the russian symbol there mm. then these are the last survivors from one of the other other villages so we managed to go to this little village uh -huh. just just outside the exclusion zone and the whole village was empty and there was the, the only two couple still living in the still village living so there. Uh -huh. and it was magical to get to know them obviously the, the barrier language was very big uh -huh. So in order to relax everybody at 10 o'clock in the morning, we had a homemade vodka, a glass like that. <laughs> okay, was that to close the language barrier? <laughs> and so I was we like basically together. drunk from there. And then, this is just incredible. Um, you know, this is, because my mom used to be a teacher. Oh, so yeah. this is a classroom with the with the board with you wow. like you know the teacher was like yeah. and this is the class of day so true. that repeats everywhere i go it's like pianos and 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 classrooms when uh -huh. we were in, in mozambique as well you know like in classrooms <laughs> in nepal yeah i saw pieces and, of you with kids and yes on a school and, and this is something that brings you back, you know, to your roots. And it's like, I, I just remember my mom, like, like being a teacher all the time. <laughs> oh, Karen. I I'm, so I'm sorry, I'm not very... your mom. Yes, I'm sorry, I'm not very good on sharing experiences. I'm not used to talk about myself. And this is a big challenge for me. Hopefully, you don't get bored. No, Roberto, this is beautiful. And now I want to know about, because now you're working on a series that is called Away From The Light. Away From The Light, yes. This is kind of, after all this journey, after all these amazing experiences that I have, I think finally I found my language. Finally, I, I, I found my voice. It took a long time. And... I took the yoga teachings into photography and I'm using photography as a therapy, as a way to get to know myself and a, a way to um, really say how I feel. You know, I went to big depression. I went to um, insecurity. I, I, I was really bad in a very bad shape for, for many years. And I think, taking this kind of journey into away from the light, you know, away from color, 
away from people wearing dresses, away from from making always see the world, making the world look pretty. Pretty, yeah, yeah. You know, because, you know, when you are in a camera and you, you just, you are in a square frame or mm -hmm. doesn't matter which camera you use, big, small or whatever. It's like you, you interpret the world to make it look pretty, mm -hmm. you know? And for many years, I was just making a pretty world for myself, which okay. I didn't feel it was, I was true, honest to myself. So now that I'm an old guy. So, <laughs> well, talking about food, now that you're saying you, 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 you that, remi uh, that reminds me of a quote by uh, Maya Angelou that it yes. says, I believe that the most important single thing beyond yes. discipline and creativity is yes. daring to dare. There you so go. I think what you did there, like coming out of this and going deep, trying to... I think I have nothing to prove to anyone anymore. My two parents are dead. I'm, an, I'm a grown-up man. I have a beautiful, colorful life. It's time to be honest. And um, yeah, so un unfortunately, my honesty comes in a dark place, <laughs> <laughs> which is also poetic, which is, um, it comes a lot from meditation, a lot of um, um, self-discovery, pushing the boundaries, not in a, in a, art, um, Not like an artistic way, but into, into a human way. How can I be a better man? How can I be at service? How can I have a, a purpose in this life? So celebrating my friends like you, celebrating um, just every single day that passes, you know, back to basics. Back to basics. Back to basics and being, yeah, being true and honest with what you see and believe and be what true. Be with true. That. Yes. And so, there yes, is a question me. that I ask everyone. It's yeah. uh, if you had a superpower, what would that be? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I think I. To be a Jedi, just like you. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh. You, suddenly have the, you suddenly have the doll. <laughs> you are a real Jedi. Come <laughs> on. <laughs> you are a real Star Wars. You were in that world. You know, I was growing up with the Star Wars. Oh. And, uh, it's like like all my youth was a Star Wars and, and I think now I'm a yoga teacher because I wanted to be a Jedi. Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> and you are actually <laughs> oh. in Star Wars. <laughs> in Star Wars is spreading the force. <laughs> and if you would if you could go in time, anywhere in time, where would you go? I think I would go to the future. The future. Yes. Oh, not knowing what is out there. No, just this, just yes. Maybe go to Mars. I will if if you ask me where to go, and it's like oh, there is no way back. It's all right. Let's take me to Mars. Let's see what's there. The curiosity. You know, I'm like a little puppy. I'm like <laughs> just to see what is there. What's what else is there? And and I'm I just get excited with with very little things. So imagine if you take me to Mars. It's going to be so <laughs> exciting. <laughs> In whatever in what we talked about is all implied there, but I'll just ask you what mm -hmm. uh, does it mean for you the magic of human beings? I think you and me and the rest of the world. I think we're all magical. I think we all have something to to live for, to love. Um, I think with the right education, this could really be a, a better world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we all have that magic. Like we all, we all can just just have a better world if we decide to do it. Oh, Roberto, it's been wonderful. 
And I want to finish with this quote that I found on your <laughs> on one of your places that I was researching. Yes. Life and love are not you. They are oh, one. Yes, amazing. To love means to see and feel <laughs> life in everything. Yes. Life is here. Life is there. Life yes. is everywhere. There is nothing but life, and there is nothing but love. Amma. That's so beautiful. Roberto. Beautiful. You know that woman hugs people for a living. Yes, I know. <laughs> she comes every year to London. <laughs> she just hugs people. Uh, yeah, I think Amma. that's going to be my next job. If you ask me where you want to go, I'm going to go to Mars. And what you want to do, I want to hug people. Oh, you want to hug people? Oh, my and Mars. goodness. I... <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Roberto. Carol, thank you for having pleasure. me. Thank I you. hope I didn't disappoint anyone. I hope and thank you, people, I... for the hearts. No, thank you for the hearts. Thank you for for <laughs> staying. <laughs> thank you for the hearts. <laughs> and if you and I, I, w- if you I will a- practice. Sorry. Yeah. Go for it. You pray. <laughs> if you haven't seen um, Bottles of Hope, it's on Vimeo. Uh, I put the link in in one of the pictures and uh, check it out uh, Roberto's website he's always is teaching yoga which he, it's hard to get the class is very popular it's hard <laughs> me and Lina we tried many times and it's always sold out so if you have the opportunity to have time with this wonderful beautiful oh, human being you are beautiful human being Roberto <laughs> This is Carol's puppet. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Thank you for it's having me. Lots of love. Thank Lots you. Lots of love. Love. Thank Bye. you, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> now what happens? I think now I have to click here. <laughs> God, my hands are sweating, Carol. I'm sorry. I try my <laughs> Thank best. Thank you, Vanya. Thank you, Lian. Oh, they're Thank still alive. Well. Liza, Laurie. Oh, Honeyman, is how you say your name. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us. And if you have any questions, please uh, send us via text uh, on the message. M- Maddie. Thank you, Mom. Mom. Minha mãe, Roberto. Minha mãe. Mamá. Pa. Muito gusto. <laughs> <laughs> this is my Espanol with a, a accent, with a Portuguese accent. <laughs> Mucho gusto. <laughs> Mucho gusto. Oh. Bye, mamá. Obrigado pelos corações <laughs> e pelo amor. Oh. Bye, oh, bye. Thank you. Bye, bye. What do I-